Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today we're talking about a brand new ColourPop collection. This is the Pretty Please collection. It's launching on Thursday, December 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Hopefully this video will be up a few hours before the launch time. If you're not sure what time that is in your time zone, you can just give it a quick Google check and that will let you know what time that is wherever you live. Now I will be giving approximate prices here in this video. They haven't officially announced the prices yet as of the time I'm filming this, so I may be off by a dollar in either direction, but the prices that I'm using for this video are based on the existing products that are already on the site. So it should be pretty close, but please don't shoot the messenger if they do decide to change the prices because every once in a while that does happen. I'm not sure when or if this collection will be available at Ulta. I have a feeling it will be. This just feels like a good Ulta drop for them. So I assume that this may eventually become available at Ulta as well. However, if you decide to purchase this or anything else from the ColourPop website, then I have a coupon code. It is an affiliate code. It's just my first name, Amanda, and that will save you 10% on most things on the ColourPop site. Every once in a while there are exceptions and of course if something's on sale it may be cheaper to purchase it with the sale instead of voiding that sale by adding a coupon code. So keep an eye on your cart totals. I always want you to have the best deal possible. I do greatly appreciate anybody who chooses to support the channel by using my affiliate code. It definitely makes a big difference for me, so thank you to everybody for your continued support with my affiliate code. I really appreciate it, and I hope that I'm going to give you a very valuable video today. I'm going to show you close-ups, swatches, I have some palette comparisons, some pretty good ones I think. My goal with my review videos is always to give you the best information possible so that you can make good purchasing decisions. So I hope that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start with some lip products. There are three Fresh Kiss lip creams in this collection. These are typically priced at nine US dollars a piece. So I'm guessing that's where these will be. These have very, very cute packaging and the outer packaging is okay for me, but I really like the product packaging on the actual components for these Fresh Kiss lip creams. I think these are so cute. Just the little bows on the lids. I don't know. Something about that is cuter to me than the outer cardboard packaging. Otherwise, the components are the exact same shape and size, same little pointed doe foot applicator, same formula, same everything. If you want more info on the different lip products, I have a full ColourPop lip formula breakdown video. So check that out if you're feeling overwhelmed by the number of different lip formulas they have because they do, they have a lot. These colors make sense for the collection. I think they're pretty cute. I really like the cooler tones in the Off to Paris shade. I wish there was a little bit more variety here, like one really, really dark, cool toned red or something, but I do think these are cute. They make sense in the collection. A lot of people will like them. Next, we have the Cheek Dew Serum Blushes. These are typically priced at $8 a piece. This is, I feel, a very polarizing product. You either love this or hate it. Personally, I like a really dewy cheek. I like a cream blush, and I don't mind if it stays a little shiny and not all the way dried down. I also have really dry skin, so that's definitely a factor for me as well. So I like these. I like to see new Cheek Dew colors coming out. I like the colors that they chose for the Cheek Dew blushes. I think they're a little bit more varied and a little bit more interesting than the lip cream colors, but they work really well with the collection. All of the shades that are chosen, even if they're not all my particular cup of tea, make sense with the theme and they seem like they would work well in conjunction with the other products released here. 
So I get it. It makes sense. I like the fact that they did a more bold red based pink here. And I would wear any one of these colors. I think these mix really well together too. So if you wanted to tone down the red or amp up the lighter pinky shade, then you can mix these as well. And I really like that about this formula too. So the cheek dews are among my top picks from this collection. And surprisingly for me, I really like the color sticks in this one too. This is more of a take it or leave it type of product for me just because I don't really use an eye crayon type of product very often, but I like the shades that they chose for these color sticks. They have two shimmery color sticks and then two mattes. And I like the way that these all work together. After the swatches, I'll show you how these mix and layer as well. But I think these are actually pretty interesting. The mauve shade will appeal to a lot of people. And I really like the brown shade here too. It doesn't look like much just when the product is twisted up like this. But when you see the swatch, it's a very, very neutral, cool brown. And that's just not a color that we see very often in general and definitely not from ColourPop. Their browns tend to run very warm, very orangey. So I like that this is something really different. And I think a lot of people are going to love these. And a lot of people are going to look great with these colors on the eyes. At first, I wasn't feeling the shimmery shades too much because they just felt a little too sheer for my personal taste, but I thought that they may work really well as toppers for the mattes, so I tried it with the swatch, and I absolutely love the way that this satin ribbon shade layers over the mauve matte color. Just for the sake of trying it, I tried the silvery lavender shade over the cool brown, but I think that the satin ribbon shade would have been more flattering mixed with this one as well. So satin ribbon and feminine charm, that mauve shade, are definitely my personal picks. I really like that combo and I just find it to be so simple yet interesting. Now let's talk about the palette. This is the Pretty Please palette. It has the larger pans of eyeshadow, so this should be priced around $18. This one doesn't have any eye safety warnings on the back. Just a reminder, if you want the ingredients list handy, you should keep the outer carton because the ingredients are only listed on the box, not on the palette itself. I think this theming, the design, the packaging, this really soft, super girly girly type of romantic color story is going to appeal to a lot of people. It's not really doing that much for me, but I understand the appeal and I do think a lot of people are going to love this and I think these colors are going to look great on a lot of people. When we look at the palette itself, inside there is no mirror. Like I said, these are the large pan eyeshadows and this one, like most of their cardboard palettes, does have the magnetic pan so you can take these out and swap them around if you so please. When we look at the shades inside, they're very clearly laid out in both rows and columns. So each row has a little monochromatic-ish type of color story on the top. It's very, very straight up neutral, silvery, very, very nudie. In the middle, we have more pinky to pinky red warm tones, still very neutral. And then on the bottom, it's kind of hinting at purple. There's really only two very purpley shades in here. So don't let the packaging trick you into thinking this is more purple than it is. And then each column has a different formula. So first we have super shocks, then we have mattes with glitter, then we have just straight up shimmers, and then the last column is all true mattes. So this layout is very intentional and I like that because I think this is going to be very user friendly, very straightforward. And just because it's not my personal jam, I do think that it's useful and it's a smart little layout that a lot of people are gonna gravitate towards. 
Here are the swatches. As usual, finger swatches on top, brush swatches below. This is very, very soft color story. And when you see them swatched, this is very much neutrals and pinks. Even the second purple in there is a very pinky purple. Not really enough pop for me, not really enough intensity or depth, but I realize that not everybody wants a lot of contrast, a lot of depth, not everybody wants a smoky or a really colorful type of palette, and this is gonna suit a lot of people who just want a really soft, simple, romantic type of vibe. It definitely seems like that's what this collection is aiming for. So in that regard, they definitely nailed it. Now we're going to look at some palette comparisons. First is the Sweet Nothings palette. This has been discontinued for a very, very long time. But just in case you still have it in your collection, I wanted to show this because it was the first one that popped into my mind. And you can see here Sweet Nothings is quite a bit warmer, definitely has some more depth and definitely has more of a punch of purple instead of a soft whisper of purple. Next up, we have the Menage a Moi palette. This was a holiday collection from a couple of years ago and Menage a Moi is definitely a lot more red based. Pretty Please is so much softer, so much lighter and definitely just has more of that gray undertone. There's still some pink in there, but when you see it next to Menage a Moi, it looks a lot more light gray based. So logically, the next comparison had to be the Flutterby palette. This was the reigning queen of grayish purple whispers. And again, Flutterby has a lot more depth. For sure, a similar feeling coming out of these. This is the definition of sisters, not twins. I can see these working quite well together, but I also think you could get very, very similar eye looks out of these two palettes. Now let's move on to a recent favorite of mine. This is the Aurora Struck, their most recent mega palette release. And Aurora Struck just couldn't even be as neutral as Pretty Please. <laughs> Aurora has a lot more purple and has some really true grays, whereas Pretty Please are like grayish brown. The Aurora Struck palette just overall not as similar as I expected. Now the Rock Candy palette, this is my final comparison for you, and these are the most similar. I think you can tell the Rock Candy shades are just a little bit more intense, a little bit more opaque overall, mattes and shimmers alike, but the color story is really similar. So if you already have Rock Candy, then you already have these shades. I am never here to judge anybody for double buying, but the facts are the facts. I know this was a quick one, but I really wanted to try my best to get this out for you before the launch. It's been difficult to do that lately, so I'm trying my best to expedite these videos so that you can see everything close up and get all the details before the launch. My personal picks are the Cheek Do's and the Color Sticks. But I think overall, this whole collection is going to be pretty popular. I think this is the type of makeup a lot of people want to wear. A lot of people are going to enjoy. And, you know, the packaging is pretty. The whole romantic, almost like Regency type of feel. I definitely got a little hint of a Bridgerton vibe from this. So I'm not mad at it. It's just not really my jam, but if it's your jam, then I'm excited for you for this collection to launch. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about this collection. Are you interested? Which pieces are catching your eye? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. And I love each and every one of your little sweet baby faces, and I will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.